Next we have a, a hearing consideration of adopting an, uh, uh, an uncodified ordinance renewing the imposition of a temporary moratorium on the installation of smart meters and related equipment. Um, I remember we had we did this some a couple of years ago. David our, uh, one of our county councils has written a great um, definition of this and explanation of why we're doing this. Do the board members have any uh, questions or comments on this? Yes, Mr. Yes, President. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I appreciate you putting this on uh, the agenda and, and, and on the policy agenda, even though I consider this to be uh, a relatively straightforward procedure. I think it's important to elevate the, our board's uh, ongoing commitment to the community who have concerns about smart meters um, and consider that this action that we take it today is our way of prodding the CPUC to finish the unfinished business, uh, to come up with fair rates uh, for opting out, to resolve once and for all whether there is the opportunity for community-wide uh, opt-out, um, and to respect that individuals should be able to control our destinies in our own homes. So, um, I don't I, I, I would just ask that those who just shared their enthusiasm um, respect our time and not turn this into another hearing if we in fact are all in unanimous agreement. That doesn't mean I don't want to hear from any of you, but I do, I do ask that you respect the board's uh, support that has been ongoing and, and appears to me to be uh, consistent today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, would, would any members of the public like to speak? And just bearing in mind that if you talk a really long time, votes might be changed. So. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, I welcome. Hi, Nancy Bennett, 405 San Francisco Boulevard, San Anselmo. I'm here about the smart meter thing, and I'm really uh, proud of you um, making this moratorium. CPUC has been really brutal, and uh, in uh, some other states, it's even been worse. You may have heard about the case in Illinois, but I want you to know that. I mean, they shouldn't even be charging us for opt out. But the, even opting out, those uh, each of those um, meters has between nine thousand nine hundred and eighty one. <coughs> to 190,000 transmissions daily. It's death, it's really bad, and people who live near them are getting very sick. But even if you opt out, it, it's all around you, so I, I'm really just, uh, and I'm a member of Smart Warrior Marin, and that's our main thing. I'm gonna get out of here fast, so. <laughs> Great, next, if you could try to keep your comments to two minutes, that would be helpful, because we are behind. Thank you, welcome. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Brandon from the Ecological Options Network, and I'm so appreciative of your um, ongoing support in this issue. I just wanted to tell you that when you first did enact that moratorium um, against the forced installation of smart meters, you sent a, a tone and message of hope throughout not only the county, and the state, but the whole country. And actually, it, it went international. Marin is known as an epicenter of the pushback from this um, unwise smart grid plan. Thank you so much for all your efforts. Thanks for coming. I appreciate your benefits uh, at, in acting for us. I think there's something that uh, you perhaps do not consider as much as you might, and that is the fiscal aspect of this program. And it is very important that you do expand your awareness into that. Because in the beginning, the smart grid and the smart meter deployment had been <coughs> sold to the utilities. The program sounded like just too much work and too much risk. So the concept people got busy. Uh, they knew there was an easy way to amass social engineering material by linking data collection to essential services such as water, gas, and electric power. 
and buckets of taxpayer dollars called federal stimulus have been landed on the utilities. The public utility commissions have made sure that guaranteed profits were linked to expanded infrastructure. Uh, the smart meter program assures greater profits for the utilities. It guarantees higher costs and less service to the customers. Remote disconnection for non-compliance is built into this program. When appliances are ruined and houses burn down as the utilities figure out how to use these remote controls, there's plenty of hush money to pay off the customers who survive the fires. It is ratepayers' money and it is diverted. But the data is pouring in. It is a Katrina, a Sandy of data. Their problem is how to store, package, and sell all this information from the data spewing energy hogs. What you did in January 2011 was groundbreaking and inspiring. This is an energy wasting, hacker friendly, consumer punitive idiocy. So please, play it again, Sam. Lots of water cup. Script needs to rewrite. Thank you. Hello, Barbara Winches, 43 Madrone and Woodacre. I'm also on the Health Council, but I'm speaking today as a private citizen. I wanted to thank um, Supervisor Kinsey and all of the board for your actions on this item and um, your continued support. And it means a lot to myself and my husband personally with our health issues, our neighbors and friends that are affected. As a pharmacist, I am privy to hearing people who come in uh, who have issues with uh, smart meters being put on their houses. Uh, I also have spoken to physicians who are affected and are afraid to talk about it because of its um, uh, waiting in the medical community. I also would like you to um, consider this. I've been reading about the effect of these uh, instruments and other microwave emitting um, uh, instruments on plants and specifically trees. There is a huge body of evidence on the effect of these devices on plant life and on trees that is amassed for years and years in the past archives of scientific literature. Living in West Marin with the trees around us, I really worry about the effect of these devices on the trees. So um, uh, I'll, I'll stop now, but I really appreciate all of you working hard on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sandy Ross, I'm on the Health Council where I'm speaking as a private person and as president of Health and Habit. Smart meters are not mandatory. They were only legislated by Congress to be offered to people, and they do not have an underwriter's lab label. They carry a unique pulsed modulated digital signature that creates an almost constant involuntary exposure condition for people in their homes. We've just heard that the pulses occur from 10,000 to 190,000 times a day, which is once every nine seconds up to once every half second. This goes on day and night. They also have a peak power level of two and a half watts. That's one and a half times more than their safety data stated when they applied to the CPUC. Perhaps more dangerous to us are the high frequency transients called dirty electricity created by the digitization process in the smart meter. This puts spikes on your electric lines which emanate from the walls and all around you. They go back out to on the lines to the transformer so they go to every single house on that transformer which is what people are talking about about why they want neighborhood and community opt out. I'm going to skip most of this but I hope you'll read the big report that I'm handing in. An NIH study showed that brain glucose levels change in response to wireless exposures, and a nuclear expert at UCSD stated that the whole body exposure of smart meters is actually 100 times that of a cell phone. Interestingly, the ICD codes that they've had in Europe for a decade include those for damage from electromagnetic fields and radio frequency and we're just going to get those in 2014 here. But they've been diagnosing electrosensitivity in Europe for years, and in fact, the latest report suggests that by 2025, half the people will be electrically sensitive. Thank you.
did that with nine seconds to spare. <laughs> yes. Hi, Valerie Cliff from Fairfax again. Um, early on, we organized scores of concerned citizens to fight back against the illegal installation of smart meters, forming the organization Smart Warriors, which was subsequently spied on by one of the PG&E execs, subsequently named Peeping Ralph by the press. <laughs> Um, in Fairfax, we have the backing of our police department if we find PG&E attempting to install. We have a well-organized phone and email alert system in case PG&E does come into our town, and we have stopped them a number of times. The problem for us is that we have many residents who live in unincorporated Marin, many West Marin and unincorporated Fairfax residents have been in touch with me and asked me to please ask you to strengthen the moratorium Countywide by compelling the Marin County Sheriff to back up your moratorium. Thank you very much. Well, I just want to top it off with uh, an expression of my gratitude to you. Thank you. <coughs> right. I'm going to bring this back to the board. Do I have a motion to uh, adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. Okay. Any opposition? Pass. Thank you. Thank you.